Hello and uh, thank you for uh, clicking on the video. This will be part two of the previous video I was making on uh, background investigations. So to continue my conversation, why am I placing such a big emphasis on you uh, making a copy of this document once you've updated? Because background investigators like myself, I'm a former background police background investigator, um, we can use that to basically disqualify you. In other words, if you lost your first form that you submitted with the first law enforcement agency and then you submit another form and now there's a lot of differences between the form you submitted with the first agency and the one you are now submitting that's going to raise a red flag and in many cases i use that to basically disqualify applicants so you don't want to lose that you want to make sure that uh that's something that you take care of um background investigations are tricky i know one of the students i just met with recently wanted to list me as a reference um, and we, we, uh, we were having a conversation and I mentioned something like, um, hey, what job are you applying for? And the student didn't really know, uh, you know, maybe the, it had applied to different places and, and didn't really know and so they had to, you know, I had the student dig into the email and, uh, and pull up what the job description was and then we talked about it for a little bit. We said, you know, I told her, I said, you know, you need to, you need to know the job description uh, to a T before you walk into to the interview for that position. Why? Because they're trying to see if you're going to be a good fit for that position, right? So if you don't know the job you're applying for or you haven't really read the application in detail, then you don't know how to answer your questions during the interview uh, that will convince the people who are interviewing you that you're the best person for the job. Uh, background investigations. Uh, Everybody that's listed as a reference will be contacted. They will receive either a phone call from the background investigator or a letter asking you if you have ever shown uh, discrimination against others, if you drink excessively, if you use drugs, uh, if you are engaged in any kind of criminal activity. Uh, of course, for the majority of you, that would be no, no, and no. Um, and, and one thing that I have to mention is uh, when you meet with a background investigator, the first, uh, one of the first questions that he or she will ask you is, um, I need to get your password to your social media accounts. Think about this for a second. So some of you have Instagram, you have Snapchat, you have maybe Facebook still. Um, background investigators uh, are going to ask for your passcode, you know, your password to get into your accounts so they can peruse your pictures. So you need to look through your pictures and see, and if some of you have old uh, Facebook accounts with some kind of shady pictures with some of your friends uh, throwing some weird signs or whatever, I mean, those pictures need to be removed. Um, you're, you're applying to a law enforcement agency, you need to set to example, and so uh, you should not uh, leave anything uh, in there that could potentially raise some questions and disqualify you from that. So uh, the other thing is, I, I received another question, uh, if if the uh, background investigator can uh, or will they ever look through your phone uh, just like social media they can ask to look through your phone uh, during the interview with a person they can say hey let me let me have your phone and then can I get the passcode I want to see some of the text messages you've been sending so if that were to happen uh, let me ask you this would you be ready for it would you be ready to uh, for the background investigator to look through your text messages that you've been sending back and forth to friends, family, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, and would that be okay? Uh, I know people who um, are sending text messages that are highly damaging to their future. And um, if you're applying for a law enforcement agency, you need to be aware of that. Uh, negative text messages will in fact hinder your ability to get hired in law enforcement. I know of officers who got hired and the first week they got on the job, they took a, a selfie picture and made some comments that, you know, watch out, you know, MFers, I'm coming for you, B word, and they've lost their job on the first week of employment. So very important, the stuff that I'm telling you, you cannot find this anywhere. <laughs> really no background investigator will tell you what I'm telling you. Uh, in fact, when we are sent to a background investigation school by uh, our agencies that we worked for, um, we are trained to find anything to wash you during the background investigation process. 
we are not trying to pass you by any means. There are you know 13 or 14 areas that we look at, um, and and if you flunk any of these areas, we can just send you a letter say, hey, you uh, you were not uh, chosen, you've been disqualified, or uh, you know you, your our agency that you know you don't fit our agency profile, whatever it is, right? And and in many cases, you will never know why you failed a background investigation, which leads me to the next point. Um, I mentioned this in class to my students. I can't emphasize enough. You have to apply to at least, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten agencies all at once. It is a huge mistake to apply to one agency and then wait to see what's going to happen. And the answer is, the background investigator is going to try to find anything they can to wash you. That's their job, right? So if you apply to a group of agencies, there is this uh, there is this belief by the background investigator that hey, if I don't hurry up and finish this person's background, such and such agency is going to pick them up, right? And so it's that whole thing of they're trying to get you to sign up with them before somebody else takes you. But if you've only applied one agency, your background investigation may sit on the bottom of the stack because there'll be less urgency to get it completed. So. With so many agencies hiring, and if you want to get a list of these, please go on their website, uh, post, P-O-S-T, dot C-A, dot G-O-V, and then click on the, uh, on the list of agencies hiring, and you'll be able to see in alphabetical order all the agencies in California that are hiring. And so, again, do not apply to one agency. I know some of you, as you're listening to this, you say, well, my dad has worked in this agency and I want to work there. Well, that's fine. Someday you can go back there and that could be one of the agencies that you apply. But it's never a good idea to only apply with one agency because if you fail that background the first time, the second agency will use those results and you may never find out uh, what happened. I'll give you an example. I had a student uh, that came into my office and um, he basically came out of the military and uh, he had applied to a law enforcement position and one of the questions uh, that was asked, have you ever uh, manufactured, transported, possessed any kind of you know, illegal drug? You know? And he, he answered yes. Um, apparently when he came out of the military, he went to visit his grandma and the grandma who had a, a habitual use of marijuana asked him, if he would transport, uh, if he would go buy some drugs for her, basically marijuana from somebody that she had already paid for. And so he transported the drugs uh, from that person's house to grandma, dropped them off. He himself wasn't using, but the fact that he transported drugs and the fact that he went and picked up the drugs for her and then brought it to her showed very, very poor common sense. And guess what? He was washed by that agency. He was failed on the background investigation and the next agency that he applied to basically used those results to basically disqualify him from the first, you know, failing that. So I haven't heard from him. I don't know if he was able to get back on, uh, but I will tell you that some mistakes are irreparable and you can't come back. So um, I do urge you to continue sending me questions on, the, on this channel. I urge you to send me emails as well. I'm going to answer every single one of them that I, I, I'm able to do. Um, I thank you for listening. I do hope that you are taking good care of yourself. I hope you're making the right choices so that you'll have the right career with the right pay and for a prosperous future. Learn to say no early to distractions. I mentioned this before in some of my videos. I can't stress that enough. Uh, cut back on your social media time. Cut back on your time on YouTube watching videos that are not bettering your future. I always say if you improve your life 1% a day in 100 days, you'll be 100% better. So sit down, uh, look on Instagram. I just posted a, uh, a picture of a guy sitting on a cliff and it said that if you haven't set some goals, you'll be running your whole life not knowing uh, you know, where the goalpost is or exactly what your purpose is. So I do uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the channel uh, and take good care of yourself.